Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Before we get started, I should point out, in case you haven't already, that you can unlock a whole bunch of free cards just by using the Game Awards promo code in the store to redeem a code. And you get access to one copy of Search for Ascanta, one Risk Factor, one Vraska's Contempt, one Cleansing Nova, one Galta Primal Hunger, and then a bunch of Uncommons, a full playset of Lava Coil, Merfolk Branchwalker, Sabotage, Conclave Tribunal, and The Eldest Reborn. So pretty useful to get started. So the way to do it is just to go to the store and then under redeem code put game awards and then it should unlock for you. Today we're taking a look at the Wrath of Mage starter deck. First of all take a look at the deck list and play a game with the deck without making any changes to it out of the box. And then afterwards we'll gradually upgrade the deck and then play some games with the fully upgraded deck as well. So Wrath of Mages is a blue-red Spells Matters deck that has a few payoff cards here like Gutter Snipe that deals 2 damage to each opponent whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell and Enigma Drake that gets bigger the more instants and sorceries we have in our graveyard. So let's take a look at our entire list. At 1 mana we've got 3 copies of Gitu Lava Runner, 1 mana for a 1-2 Human Wizard and as long as there are 2 or more instant and or sorcery cards in our graveyard Lava Runner gets plus 1 plus 0 and has haste. Then we've got 3 copies of Sheevan Fire as a nice cheap removal spell dealing 2 damage to a creature and we can also pay the kicker cost of 4 mana to deal 4 damage to that creature instead. Then we have 2 copies of Blink of an Eye as a nice bounce spell returning target null and permanent to its owner's hand and then if we pay the kicker cost of 1 on a blue we also get to draw a card. And then we've got Disperse which is just Blink of an Eye without kicker. We've got a Mystic Archaeologist as a nice card draw engine, 2 mana for a 2-1 Human Wizard and for 5 mana we get to draw 2 cards. We've got Arcanist as a 2 mana 1 3 Merfolk Wizard, and we can tap it to add 1 colorless mana to spend on instant or sorcery spells. We've got 2 Lightning Strikes as removal that can also go to the face. We've got Avon Wind Mage as a 3 mana 2 2 Bird Wizard with flying, and whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, it gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Then we've got 2 copies of Fight with Fire that can deal 5 damage to a creature at sorcery speed, and for a total of 9 mana we can deal 10 damage, divided as we choose among any number of targets instead, which also includes players. We've got 2 copies of Gutter Snipe, we've got 1 Repeating Barrage, dealing 3 damage at sorcery speed to any target, also as Raid, so for 5 mana we can return it from the graveyard to our hand if we've attacked with a creature this turn. We've got our 3 Enigma Drakes as one of our primary win conditions. Then we've got some more card draw, at 4 mana with Sift, drawing 3 cards and discarding a card at sorcery speed. We've got a Rowdy Crew, which can also be a win condition for mana for a 3-3 Human Pirate with Trample. And when it enters the battlefield we get to draw 3 cards and then discard 2 cards at random. And if the discarded cards share a card type, Rowdy Crew picks up 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters. We've got a Salvager Secrets, that can return an instant or sorcery card from our graveyard back to our hand. River's Rebuke can be a powerful bounce spell, returning all null and permanent target player controls back to their owner's hand. And then we've got a Banefire, which can also function as a finisher dealing X damage to any target for X and a red. And if X is 5 or more, Banefire can be countered and damage cannot be prevented. And finally we also have an Entrancing Melody for X and Double Blue to gain control of target creature with converted mana cost X. And of course, creature tokens have a converted mana cost of 0, so you can just play it for Double Blue, X being 0, to steal a token. And then taking a look at our mana base, we've got 10 islands, 10 mountains, 4 highland lakes and 1 sulfur falls. So that's the deck, now let's jump into a game and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw and our hand is okay, we're a bit light on creatures, just a one to lava runner, but hopefully the sift can find more threats. So I think we'll keep. Opponent on turn 1 mountain, we'll do the same and play lava runner. And then next turn we can decide if we want to maybe Lightning Strike something or play a tapped Highland Lake. Opponent does have a Goblin Instigator. Alright, so there's a few approaches we can take here. We could play an untapped plant, attack with a Lava Runner if our opponent double blocks. We can Lightning Strike one of the tokens. Don't think that's the right approach with this hand where we're trying to cast a Sift and get ahead on cards that way. We're going to take a slightly more controlling approach, I think. And I think we can still afford to play an untapped plant. But instead of trying to attack, we're just going to sit back on our Gitu Lava Runner to block the 1-1 one -one tokens. Tormenting Voice discarding Ornery Goblin. So maybe our opponent on a Goblin deck, who knows. 
no attacks and we're just gonna untap here play a tap plan say go so we've got a few bounce spells in our hands goblin war chief so yeah goblins confirmed that could be a potential target for lightning strike put on sends in the war chief we're fine killing it with lightning strike Untap, find a gutter snipe, alright, so that's gonna reward us for playing a bunch of spells afterwards. We could play it now, we could sift first, and then next turn we can have 5 mana for gutter snipe, plus maybe a 2 mana instant or sorcery. I think we're fine to sift now, it's more mana efficient, and gives us more options for next turn. Alright, so we picked up some more lands, probably don't need both lands here, so we can discard one of them. So let's discard the mountain. And now Lava Runner is a 2-2, so I don't mind attacking with it and trading 2 damage for 2 damage. And if our opponent wants to double block, that's fine. So now the next Lava Runner is also powered up. So play we could make is Gutter Snipe plus Disperse. Opponent just says go. Another Sift is nice. Alright, so we could also go Gutter Snipe plus G2 Lava Runner. And then we won't have Disperse at the ready. I kind of like the idea of Disperse, since if our opponent tries to kill one of our creatures, we could also save it with Disperse, potentially. So let's attack first, see what happens. And then I'm just gonna play Gutter Snipe and pass the turn with Disperse at the ready. And our opponent's gonna Lightning Strike the Gutter Snipe, and we're gonna... Bounce it in response and deal 2 damage to our opponent. Opponent's got 6 mana, gets him for 2. And passes the turn. Enigma Drake, not a bad pickup. So by bouncing our own Gutter Snipe, we saved Gutter Snipe, which is pretty important, but we did set ourselves back on tempo a little bit, which might hurt us a little bit here, as we've got a few too many cards in hand that we can't all deploy at the same time. Uh, Enigma Drake right now 3 power, and at 4 toughness it survives a lot of removal that the opponent could have. So I don't mind this turn instead of replaying Gutter Snipe, just playing a second Lava Runner, attacking for 4 and then committing Enigma Drake to the board, which is more likely to survive. So let's play another Lava Runner. Tank for 4. Play Enigma Drake. and then see how they want to deal with it. It's gonna be a Lava Coil, alright, that's fine. And an Ornery Goblin. Opponent has to say go, and now we could Gutter Snipe plus Avon Wind Mage. Could also Gutter Snipe and play an Unkick to Blink of an Eye. Um, but I think we're fine if Gitu Lava Runner trades for Ornery Goblin here. I think the play will be to just attack first. and just let a bunch of trades happen. Even though we could have saved one Lava Runner by using a Bounce Spell, but now we're just gonna commit two threats to the board with Gutter Snipe and Wind Mage. And next turn we can refuel with Sift. And Blink can also be a nice tempo play. Bogger Brutes. Alright, so let's start with the Sifts. Trigger the Wind Mage, trigger the Gutter Snipe. And our opponent should be pretty dead here since we can just blink of an eye without Kicker, bouncing Bogger Brutes. Trigger Gutter Snipe, attack with both. And that should do it. Alright, sweet. Alright, now that we got to see the deck in action, it's time to upgrade the deck. And there's a few directions we can go with Wrath of Mages. We could end up adding some more copies of Enigma Drake, add in some Crackling Drakes, maybe some copies of Arclight Phoenix, and we would essentially end up with the Blue Red Drakes deck, which is one of the more powerful and competitive decks in Standard right now. 
but that would require a lot of rare and mythic wild cards. So instead I prefer going down the blue-red wizard road, which is a very cheap deck to build, and all the cards we end up unlocking are still going to be useful in other archetypes like mono blue tempo and mono red. So we will build in some more wizard synergies and be a very low curve aggressive deck that's pretty close to a burn deck. And as you'll see, we'll have a lot of overlap with the mono red deck as well but still have enough wizard synergies to make it a more interesting deck. And the good news is that a ton of cards that appear in the final build of the deck are also available in some of the other starter decks, so we can add a ton of cards to the deck without having to use any wild cards. So we'll first go over all those cards. So in the Dragon's Fire Monorad starter deck, we get access to two copies of Vyashino Pyromancer. So that's a card that we definitely want in our aggressive wizard deck. So we get two copies of Pyromancer without having to use any wild cards. And then we should also have access to the full four copies of Shock without having to use any wild cards, since there's three available in the Dragon's Fire deck, as well as three copies in the Chaos and Mayhem deck. So we can easily add all four copies of Shock without having to use any wild cards, as long as we have all the decks unlocked. And then we can also do the same for Lightning Strike. There's additional copies of Lightning Strike in the Primal Fury starter deck, as well as Strength in Numbers, so we can easily have all four copies of Lightning Strike without having to use any wild cards. Then in the Walk the Plank blue-black starter deck, we get access to three copies of Siren Storm Tamer, which is a 1-mana one 1-1 one -one Siren Pirate Wizard with flying, and for one blue mana we can sacrifice a Storm Tamer to counter target spell or ability that targets you or a creature you control. So nice wizard to start off our curve, a bit of evasion built in so we can keep getting a bit of damage in, and then also helps us protect our more valuable wizards down the road. So great card for this archetype. So we'll add the three free copies we get from Walk the Plank, and in the same starter deck, Walk the Plank, we also get access to two copies of Chart of Course, which is a nice card draw spell, two mana for a sorcery that draws us two cards, and then we have to discard a card unless we've attacked with a creature this turn, which of course if we have lots of cheap creatures like Gito Lava Runner and Siren Storm Tamer, it's going to be pretty trivial to attack with a creature to draw two cards without having to discard. So we'll add two copies of Chart of Course that we get in Walk the Plank, and finally, we can also add one copy of a Risk Factor to our deck, since as we've explained earlier, we can get one copy for free using the Game Awards promo code. So we can add one copy of Risk Factor as a nice burn spell that also has Jumpstart, and eventually if the opponent's too low on life, they'll have to let us draw three cards. So we can add the first copy to our deck for free. So we've got a total of 74 cards here, so we definitely need to make some cuts here before we start upgrading the deck using wild cards. So we can pretty easily cut the copies of Sheev and Fire now that we've added four shocks as a cheap burn spell that can also go to the face. So we don't really need Sheev and Fire, even though it does sometimes have the upside of dealing four damage. And then in terms of bound spells, Blink of an Eye is strictly better than Disperse, so we can cut uh, three copies of Disperse for the time being. But eventually we'll also end up cutting the Blink of an Eye, since we're not really interested in a bound spell in this deck. We would rather just have more burn spells to go to the face. Next up we're also going to cut uh, three copies of the Arcanist, since we're going to lower the curve of the deck significantly, so you don't really need access to the mana ability from the Arcanist, and two mana for a 1-3 is not exactly where we want to be, as we're trying to be a more aggressive deck, so we can cut Arcanist. Then moving forward, we're also going to cut one copy of Sift, as we've added some copies of Charter Course as more card advantage, so we don't need all the copies of Sift anymore. We can also cut the Rowdy Crew, which is a little bit out of place in this deck to begin with. Then Salvager of Secrets is also a little bit expensive for what it does in our deck, so we can cut that one as well. River's Rebuke at 6 mana is also a bit pricey, so we'll cut that one. And then we'll also cut a Lance, since we can definitely go to 24 lands for the time being, but as we keep lowering the curve we'll see that number go even lower. So we're back down to 60 cards, and we haven't used any wild cards yet, which is what we're going to do next to really introduce those powerful wizard synergies. So first we'll go over all of the commons we want to add to the deck in order of importance, and then we'll do the same for the uncommons and the rares, as we don't have any mythic rares that we need in the main deck. So the first card we're going to add to the deck is some additional copies of Vyashino Pyromancer, as a nice 2-drop that deals 2 damage to the opponent right away when it enters the battlefield, and it's also a wizard which will be important in a second. So we'll add two more copies of the Pyromancer, and we will also complete our playset of Gito Lavarner as a nice one-drop in the deck, as we could also see in the game we just played. And then the final common we'll add to the deck is four copies of Opt as a nice one-mana cantrip that lets us scry one and then draw a card, so helps us enable a ton of our synergies. So we'll add four copies of Opt to the deck. 
And to make room for the newly added cards, we'll keep lowering the curve of the deck, so that means cutting the two copies of Blink of an Eye, since we won't easily have access to four mana to kick it. We'll also cut the Mystic Archaeologist, since we don't get to five mana as easily. Then looking further, we can also cut the Repeating Barrage, since paying five mana for the raid ability is going to be difficult. And then we'll also cut the Entrancing Melody, since Double Blue is going to be a little bit tough on the mana base, and also having to pay a lot of mana for the Axe is going to be difficult. But that also means that we can cut two more lands from the deck, so we'll cut an Island and a Mountain. So we're down to 22 lands, which is a very low amount, but with all the cantrips like Opt and Charter Course, we can still make sure that we keep hitting our land drops if we're a bit light on lands in our opening hand. So now it's time to add some uncommons to the deck, and the most important card by far in the deck is going to be Adelis the Cinderwind. 3 mana for a 2-2 legendary creature with flying and haste, and whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, wizards we control get plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, and of course Adelis a wizard herself, so this is going to be the key card in our deck that we'll add the full 4 copies of, and this will eventually replace the Enigma Drake and the Gutter Snipe as our 3 mana threat. So we'll cut the Gutter Snipes and the Enigma Drakes already. And then the other big payoff card for playing a bunch of Wizards is going to be Wizard's Lining. 3 mana for an instant, that costs 2 mana less to cast if we control a Wizard to deal 3 damage to any target at instant speed. So a very powerful card if we have a Wizard in play, since then it's just a Lining Bolt for a single red mana, which is very strong. So we'll add all 4 copies of Wizard's Lining to our deck. And since we've added Wizard's Lining, we can cut some of the other burn spells that we have, like Fight with Fire that cannot go to a player unless we're paying it with the Kicker ability, which is going to be difficult on 22 Alliance. And then we can also cut the Bane Fire, which is a bit expensive, even though it can be a nice finisher in a stalled out game. We don't really want to get to the late game, we just want to kill the opponent very quickly. And that's where Banefire is not very efficient if you don't have a lot of lands in play, since you can kind of compare the rate on Banefire versus Wizard's Lining. Single rat, 3 damage. Single rat, 0 damage, so it's not exactly where we want to be. And finally, we just want to complete some of our playsets of other uncommons we already have in the deck. So we'll add a fourth copy of Siren Storm Tamer, alongside the two additional copies of Charter Course. So by adding all four copies of Charter Course, we no longer need Sift as card draw. And by adding Siren Storm Tamers and Adelis, we don't really need the Avon Wind Mage as a win condition anymore, so that one can go as well. So we're back down to 60 cards, and the deck's almost finished. All we need to do now is add some rares to the deck, and the only non-land rare we want to add to the deck is a second copy of Risk Factor, which is going to replace the last Enigma Drake. And then all that's left to do is to make the mana base a bit better, which is not to be underestimated in a low curve deck like this one. We do want to have access to both of our colors very early in the game, so having access to a better mana base is going to be pretty key to make the deck function properly. So the first land I recommend getting is the full four copies of Steam Vents, as a land that can come into play untapped if we pay two life, and makes both blue and red mana, so perfect for both casting Siren Storm Tamer or Gitu Lava Runner on turn one. So we'll add all four copies of Steam Vents, and then afterwards we can complete our playset of Sulphur Falls as well, which also synergizes nicely with Steam Vents. And then we can cut all the Highland Lakes, which come into play tapped, and we'll be left with 7 Islands and 7 Mountains. So we've got a nice mana base, a very low curve deck, and lots of powerful wizard synergies between Adelis and Wizard's Lining, which can lead to some very explosive starts where we kill our opponent out of nowhere. So let's change the picture of the deck to Atlas, and then we can also maybe change the basic land art of the deck. So simple way to do that is just typing the basic land in the search bar, and then clicking reset, and we'll get to see all the basic land arts. And I do like uh, this one over here for our wizard deck, so we'll go up to 7, and then we can cut the other islands, and then we'll do the same with the mountain as well. Click reset. And then we'll add this mountain over here. Alright, so that covers the entire main deck. And if you're interested in playing some best of threes, I can give some suggestions for potential sideboard cards. So given that we're a very aggressive red deck, of course Experimental Frenzy is going to be a pretty powerful sideboard card against some of the grindier control matchups. Not as good as it could be in a mono red deck for example, since if you find something like an Opt or a Charter Course with Experimental Frenzy, you won't be able to deploy all the cards you draw from them, but still we have a lot of burn spells and powerful wizards that we can top deck with the Experimental Frenzy, so it might still be worth it to explore out of the sideboard. 
So we could, for example, add two Frenzies. Then given that we're a blue-red deck, we also get access to some counterspells. And especially Ionize can be a nice counterspell since it also deals two damage to the spell's controller. So this could be a powerful counterspell if we need to counter something expensive from our opponent. Of course, not the best combo with Experimental Frenzy since you can't really take full advantage of counterspells with the Experimental Frenzy if it's your turn. But of course, you can still cast them off the top of your deck if it's the opponent's turn. But uh, usually want to avoid having too many counterspells with Experimental Frenzy in your deck as well. Other cards we can consider in terms of counterspells are Spell Pierce as a nice cheap counterspell for one mana, countering target a non-creature spell unless its controller pays two. And Disdainful Stroke to counter more expensive spells for two mana. So we could add a few of those as well. Then we can also consider adding some Lava Coils to the sideboard to take care of four toughness creatures or recursive creatures that could otherwise be a problem. And of course, since we did get the full four copies of Lava Coil with the Game Awards promo, it doesn't cost us any wild cards, which is nice. Another nice wizard to consider for the sideboard is some copies of Exclusion Mage, which shines against the big creature matchups like Mono Green, for example, since you can for three mana bounce an opposing creature while adding a 2-2 wizard to the board, which can help you beat down with your smaller wizards and then add another threat to the board to kind of tempo out the opponent. So we could add two Exclusion Mages. And then we could also consider adding the Banefire that we cut from the main deck to the sideboard in matchups where we expect the game to go a bit longer, where we can hit more land drops and cast a bigger Banefire to finish off an opponent. So that could also make for a decent sideboard card. So these are just some ideas for the sideboard. And then Experimental Frenzy especially is also going to be useful in other decks like Monored, so it's definitely not a wasted wild card. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and sadly we've got a one-lander, only single mountain. Um, we can still cast our Lava Runner and our Wizard's Lining, but on the play we're not super likely to necessarily find our blue mana right away to unlock our other half of our hand, so I think we probably still have to mulligan this one. Alright, this is a lot better. We've got both our colors and some cards we can play early here. And Adelis, we don't have a third land, but it is a very powerful card of course. So I'm tempted to still keep it on top. And then we can lead with a turn 1 Gitu Lava Runner. Hope it survives and then turn 2 cast uh, Charter Course. Charter Course also needs synergy with Risk Factor. If you have to discard, you can discard a Jumpstart card and maybe get it back later. So we'll attack for 1. And then try to hit our land drops to be able to cast Adelis next turn. Alright, so this helped us undo our mulligan a little bit. Opponent on a Jeskai deck. Well, we're just gonna jam Adelis and hope it resolves. Opponent's got a Syncopate for one. Get in. So now we probably want to just play the land, play the Pyromancer to play around Syncopate, and then afterwards we can opt. to help power up the Gitu Lava Runner. And definitely don't want to draw extra lands. And another opt, so we'll start by getting in for two. That works. So we could deploy the Siren Storm Tamer, would be bad in the face of a Deafening Clarion. So we might just want to hold on to the Siren Storm Tamer, but it's not like the Storm Tamer is going to get any better. So I think we still play it here and hope to not get clarioned. Opponent with a primal amulet instead, alright, interesting. So here we're just gonna keep the land in hand for risk factor, but we can afford to opt first to see if we maybe draw into another Adelis. Charter course is probably fine. So we'll keep that on top and draw it. And then I think we attack first, we could also charter course before attacking in case we pick up a second lava runner but I think we're probably better off just drawing the extra card here. Cast Charter Course. And there's Atlas, perfect. So do we run out a land? Can probably afford to. So we'll just play a tap Steam Vents for now. And say go. We have the Siren Storm Tamer's ability at the ready. So if our opponent has something like a Settled Wreckage, we can also counter it with the Storm Tamer. 
and our opponent with a 3 mana Chemistry's Insight, thanks to the Primal Amulet drawing 2 cards. And our opponent just saying go. Alright, so we don't need to worry about Settle the Wreckage, so instead we can just play Atlas, hope they don't have an Asa Scatter, attack with everyone, and then cast Risk Factor, pumping all the wizards, thanks to Atlas, so we were gonna deal quite a bit more than lethal damage here. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, the sand looks solid, so we'll keep. And turn one island, so not exactly sure what we're up against. Given that we only have the one red source, I prefer getting out a Lava Runner over the Storm Tamer here, just to make sure we can cast all our red spells in time. And then next turn we can maybe Charter Course, or we can go Storm Tamer plus Opt. Opponent with their own Charter Course, but no creatures, so they have to discard. Discards Arclight Phoenix, their opponent's on the typical blue-red Drake deck here. Pick up a Lava Runner, so we've got a few options. Could just go Lava Runner plus Storm Tamer here, add a bunch of creatures to the board, and then next turn potentially enable the Lava Runners, or we could attack, chart course, and then next turn with an opt, the other Lava Runner will have haste, which is also pretty appealing. Yeah, I think I like the chart course line here. Alright, pick up two lands. So next turn we could go Lava Runner plus Lightning Strike as well. And there's Enigma Drake. Alright, so Enigma Drake's a little awkward since if we want to give the other Lava Runner haste and point a Lightning Strike at the Enigma Drake, our opponent's just not going to block. But if we attack, then it's too late to play the hasty Lava Runner. So I think the play is just going to be to attack with the Lava Runner, hope our opponent blocks. So we can finish off the Drake with a Lightning Strike, but they just take it. So we'll just let that happen. And then we can chart the course once again, draw two. And I think we'll add Storm Tamer to the board. And then next turn we can play a hasty Lava Runner alongside other stuff. Opponent's just gonna hard cast Arclight Phoenix and gets in for four. Alright, that's fine. I think we're happy to race in this spot. And more charter courses. Alright, so we're definitely gonna draw a ton of cards here. So we can play Hasty, Gitu, Lava Runner plus Pyromancer, but then we can charter course, we can still opt. We can just uh, play Pyromancer plus charter course, keep the Lava Runner for next turn maybe. We do want to try and apply as much pressure as possible this turn. I think I like Lava Runner, attack with everyone, and then chart a course, and then maybe opt end of turn. So let's chart a course. And a Wizard Lining is great here. Another nice one mana burn spell for us. So we'll pass a turn. And we've got a lot of burn in hand here, so if our opponent doesn't respect or attack on the way back, they could just be dead. And in fact, they're just gonna attack with a Phoenix, keep back the Drake, that's fine. And they're just gonna chart a course to draw two. Which makes Enigma Drake into a 2-4. And they're gonna pass a turn, alright, so... If we just Wizard Shining their face down to 10, we've got another 7 points of burn in our hand, which could be enough if our opponent doesn't have any interaction. I think we still go for it here, but we might change our play depending on our draw step and how our opponent reacts here. Get to untap another Wizard Shining, alright, that should definitely do it. So we can attack with everyone, hope to get a little bit of damage in, and then Pyromancer, Lightning Strike, and Lightning should be able to finish them off before we take lethal. So let's get in there. Opponent's got a one shock, which we can counter with the Storm Tamer. Do we want to counter it? Is a question. Don't think we do, since we wanna have access to all our mana here. Hope they don't have another burn spell here, essentially. But it looks like they do. Another shock. Alright. Still let that happen, so we won't be getting in any damage this turn. But we still have enough burn to kill them. The problem is if her opponent can kill us on the way back, of course. 
So in hindsight, we could have also just capped back a Storm Tamer and not attacked, so we had a blocker for the Enigma Drake. Could also finish off the Enigma Drake with a Lightning Strike, but if they have a dive down, that would be bad. So we'll let damage happen. And now we've got an interesting decision to make. So our opponent's got 7 damage guaranteed, and they could easily have more if they cast a few instants or sorceries. Another burn spell to the face could just be lethal, and we're a little bit short of killing our opponent here. So it might actually be okay to try and kill the Enigma Drake here. So we'll play the Pyromancer, deal 2 to our opponent, and then Wizard's Line need the Drake, and if they respond with Dive Down we can still Lightning Strike it. They didn't have the Dive Down, so now we can just play the Pyromancer. Number two, put them to six and then try to kill them next turn. Although they might keep the Phoenix back on defense now. It's gonna be a Crackling Drake, that's fine. And they're just gonna pass a turn and Wizard Slining should get the job done here. So that was a nice top deck. So those extra cards we drew early with the Charter Course, paying off here in the end. Sweet, so managed to beat the legit Blue-Red Drake deck with her more budget Blue-Red Wizards. And we didn't even draw Adelis, which could have been quite powerful here as well. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and this hand seems fine. Turn 1 Lava Runner, turn 2 we can decide between Charter Course or Pyromancer. Opponent on a red deck as well, blue-red, and turn to treasure map. Alright, so this could be the Niv-Mizzet's Jeskai deck. I think we probably just want to develop the Pyromancer before we start charter coursing, just to get a bit more pressure in play. That seems okay. Let's get in for one. And I think we still play the island in case we want to both play charter course and up next turn, even though it maybe reveals a bit more information that we're not a straight-up mono-red deck. And hope that our creatures survive here. Opponent says go. Pick up a Sulphur Falls. So we could opt and chart a course before attacking to pump up the Lava Runner, but I think we would rather have the extra card from the chart course. So we'll just attack with both here, see what happens. And then chart a course. See if her opponent wants to maybe counter it. They do with an Ionize, that's fine. Alright, so end of turn we can opt. At least it means that her opponent didn't get the chance to use the treasure map there. And risk factor seems good here. So Lava Runner now 2 power and pick up another Charter Course, which is great. So, let's go ahead and attack. Opponent takes it. And then we can chart a course again. That works, and pick up a Pyromancer, which is great. And now we have Adalis plus Lightning Strike next turn for lethal before our opponent gets a chance to maybe play a Niv-Mizzet. Ooh, Fiery Cannonade. Well, that's painful. So I guess uh, we won't have lethal next turn. But at least we got our attack in before the Cannonade happened. But yeah, Cannonade, one of the better cards you'll see against us alongside Deafening Clarion. But the instant speed here on Cannonade was extra painful. Alright, so I've got a bit of work to do, but our opponent is at 8, and we've got a risk factor in hand, so still have a chance. Just need to make sure we can get these spells in play before our opponent plays a Niv-Mizzet to turn things around. So I think the play is still going to be Adalus plus a Lightning Strike here. And if our opponent tries to shock Adalus, we can Lightning Strike a response. Question is, do we Lightning Strike proactively, or do we just deal 2? I think we would just deal 2 in that spot. So, let's go ahead and play Adalus. Could also get countered here. Alright. Let's attack for two. Opponent's gonna opt.
stopped again. And the hope here is that our opponent tries to shock Adelis, but they don't. All right, still have our Lightning Strike in hand, which we can use end of turn, and our Risk Factor is going to essentially let us draw three cards. Opponent's got a bunch of treasure. We could see them tap out for a niv -Mizzet. And yep, there he is. So in response, we'll Lightning Strike them. Opponent's down to three. And another Adelis. All right, so I guess we'll start by casting a Risk Factor here. Deals one to Adelis. Adelis gets plus one plus one. Unless they've got a response. It's going to be a dive down on Niv. So they can shoot down Adelis before the plus one plus one happens. That's okay. We weren't really planning on attacking with Adelis anyway. Just want to draw the three cards here. And more risk factors. So we can just cast another risk factor here. Seems fine while the opponent is mostly tapped out. Um, so I think we'll cast one from hand as opposed to jumpstart. Draw three more and then hope to just find some burn spells to finish them off and not have them countered. All right. So we've got a Shock and a Gitu Lava Runner alongside Adelis. So if our opponent attacks with niv -Mizzet, we might be able to attack back for lethal Depends what they have. Of course, casting a bunch of opts and shocks with a Niv Mizzet in play might not be the best idea. And there's a Sarkhan. So it looks pretty similar to our Is It Mizzet deck from the other week. Alright, so we're down to 10, so this is a close one. Opponent sacks with Treasure Cove to deal one more. So we're down to nine. And our opponent says go. All right, so how do we want to sequence our spells here? We've got access to seven mana total. Probably just want to lead with Adelis and Lava Runner, see what happens. So let's play Adelis. Play Lava Runner. and attack our opponents with both. And if they don't have a response, they're dead. If they do, then we might respond back. Opponent's got another Fiery Cannonade. All right, so in response, we probably just want to shock our opponents. Hmm, we probably should have cast the opt before the shock here, actually, since shock is not going to kill our opponent. And if one of our creatures survive, we have a lethal anyway. But if we opt first, there's a chance we draw into a Lightning Strike, which we can draw and cast to kill our opponent here. So now our Wizards are out of range from the Cannonade, since we still have an opt we can cast here. Opponent gets to deal one more damage. So I guess there's no real point in casting the second opt, since if they have a one mana spell, they get to kill both creatures regardless. Storm Tamer can go to the bottom. And yeah, we drew the Lightning Strike with Opt. So had we cast Opt first, we could have killed our opponent here regardless. So do they have it? They don't. Awesome. Managed to beat Is it Mizzet with our budget Blue Red Wizard deck. All right, we got to see the deck in action against both the Is It Drake's deck as well as the bigger Niv Mizzet version. So the deck definitely has some lags, despite being a much cheaper deck to build. So feel free to let me know in the comments which deck we should upgrade next. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.